Yo guys, what's going on? My name's Callum Dolby and welcome back to another video. So this is going to be a little mini series where I go through all of Posh's summer signings and just look at their stats and what they've been doing for their previous clubs, um, just so we can get a bit of a better picture heading into pre-season, which will start, obviously it started in La Manga a couple of weeks ago um, with a win over St Mirren, uh, Tony and Moai, so one of the new signings getting both of the goals, um, but our proper pre-season I guess you could say starts tomorrow, we're heading to Stamford um, and I will be going to that game, so there probably will be a video um, for that as well. I would just like to apologise as well for not uploading the past few weeks, um, the simple reason being I just don't really have any content to upload. Um, um, so I don't want to just force content out there for the sake of it um, and it just not be the best I can put out. I want to put out the best content I can, even if it does mean not making videos for a while. Because, yeah, like I said, I haven't been able to because there's been nothing really to make content on. Um, but obviously with the new season coming up, pre-season started now, um, <clears throat> I'll be able to upload a lot more, a hell of a lot more. And I'm looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, let's let's get into this video. Right, let's get straight into it then. So the first person that I'm talking about is the new goalkeeper, which I'm actually quite excited about. Uh, his name is Christy Pym, and we signed him on a free from Exeter, or not from Exeter, he got, uh, yeah, I think it was like a pre-contract agreement. Um, this one I am actually quite excited about because our keepers the last few seasons haven't been the best, they've been average. Um, Connor O'Malley seems to just He's not aggressive enough, in my opinion. He um, he flaps a lot of crosses. He doesn't really take command of his area. Doesn't really come off his line a lot either, which I don't really like because it just if he if he's not confident, then why should we as fans be confident in his you know his, in his abilities? Um, from what I've seen from like highlights and stuff of Pim, he's quite aggressive. Um, he comes off his line very quickly for a, a big lad and. Um, yeah, he, he looks like a decent keeper, so we'll have to see how he goes. He's, uh, like I said, he's six foot tall, um, so it's not not the tallest. I'd like someone who's probably 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you know, a bit more commanding, but hopefully he can make his height, uh, make up for his lack of height, I should say. Um, because a problem we had with Mark Tyler in the past was... He was a brilliant keeper. He was just he wasn't tall enough. That was pretty much the only reason why he didn't make it any higher, in my opinion. Um, so hopefully his height doesn't hinder him. But we will see with the upcoming season. So just a quick little fact file on Pim. These sections aren't going to be too long, just so you know. They're going to be like a a couple of minutes or a few minutes for each player, just to you know keep it rolling nicely. So um, he was born in Exeter and came through the youth ranks there. Um, he got handed his first professional contract in 2013 by the manager then, which I believe was Paul Tisdale. Um, he's made 127 um, appearances for Exeter and last season he got 14 clean sheets, which is actually pretty decent for one season. It's certainly better than our keepers last season, but obviously this is this is the league below. Um, he made his debut for Exeter in a 3-2 win versus Southend in February of 2014. And then from there, because he was a replacement for their keeper who was called Arta Kryziak or Kryziak, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, but he he jumped in for, I'm guessing that he was injured, he jumped into the starting lineup and then from there, the last five games of the season, he got handed the number one shirt and he impressed quite a bit as, um, as far as I'm aware. And then into 2015, uh, well, the you know 2014-15 season, he kept that number one shirt. Um, but he was battling with uh, James Hammond, who was another keeper. I think exactly the same age at this point. I think they were both 19. They were both getting turns with the uh, with the number one shirt, a bit like um, Chapman and O'Malley were last season. Uh, if you can draw comparisons to that, but. Uh, Pim managed to get about 24 appearances, I believe, and uh, Ham Hannon, or Hammond, was it? Hammond, there you go, that's, that's the benefit of having notes. Um, Hammond only made 21 appearances, I seem to remember, so um, Pim actually got the better of that, which is obviously good to see. Uh, and then in 2016, uh, he was... He would obviously he carried on this sort of reign as being the, the top number one, and then actually our former keeper Bobby Alejnik, if you posh fans remember him, bold guy, pretty decent. Um, 
yeah, he came in and took took over the number one shirt. So um, Pim was sort of pushed to the back, and he's he had to fight for that number one shirt again, which he did manage to do. Um, and then obviously he was uh, released from his contract, or a pre pre contract agreement was you know agreed with X term or the Pim and uh, Peterborough uh, in twenty nineteen. Obviously to bring him into the club, he signed in July, uh, not July, what was it? Uh, he signed in June. That was it, June. And yeah, we'll we'll see where he goes from here. Hopefully, he can be a decent ad addition to the team. Because one thing we have really struggled with the past few seasons is our defence and um, our goalkeepers. So um, hopefully, he can just have the number one shirt and keep it the whole season, like no debate. And we just won't have to mess around. And we've also signed a lot of defenders as well, uh, which is really good to see. And we've got some really good fullbacks because, Jesus Christ, we've had some bad left backs in the past few years. Like um, just last season, I mean, we had Tyler Denton and um, Colin Daniel. Jesus Christ. Right, let's get straight into the second signing out of eight that I've got to go through in this video. Um, I'm not too sure really what to say on this one. I'm not. Um, I don't know too much about him. I've gone through various different websites to try and get some sort of stats, um, which I have managed to get, but um, there isn't really too much to say on this one. So this is uh, Fraser Blake Tracy from Kingsland, uh, which is the they're in the sixth division or the sixth pi uh, level on the pyramid of the football system. So they'd have to get promoted twice to be in League Two. Um, the only thing that really concerns me about this one is that he's only twenty. He's uh, twenty three years old and. Um, or is he 22? Uh, he's yeah, he's 23. So um, you know, at this at that sort of age, <clears throat> you'd hope, be hoping that he's already starting for like a league club to sign for for us. But um, you know, things sometimes work out like this. A lot of players bloom later in their careers. Um, we had the similar similar situation with Ricky Miller last year. Obviously, that did not work out whatsoever. Uh, two years ago, sorry, actually. Um, and yeah, he had his own personal problems and it just didn't work out. I think he was 26 or 27 maybe when he joined us. Um, and yeah, that's that's the only thing I'm really concerned about with this uh, Blake Tracy because when you sign someone from non-league, as we've done in the past, they're normally anywhere between 16 and 20 uh, years old and um, that gives them time to sort of learn new things and get the new manager's style of play implemented in themselves and they get a lot of chance to grow um, because you sort of hit your peak probably around 25 26 as a fullback so he hasn't got that much time <clears throat> but obviously if he works on it then he could become a good player um, so what i have found is obviously he came on a free transfer from kings lynn um, we offered to pay some sort of compensation because we couldn't approach him on a pre-contract term to get him for free. Because um, obviously you have to be over 24 years old for that to apply. And um, yeah, we, we didn't actually, uh, we, we offered compensation, but I'm not sure what the figure was for that or if it got accepted or whatever. Um, so yeah, he made 98 appearances over two seasons for Kings Lynn, scoring once, and he got a handful of assists. I couldn't actually find the exact number of assists that Blake Tracy managed to get, but because um, it literally wasn't anywhere, I literally searched every single website you can think of, um, and all it said on the uh, Posh article was that, that he got a few assists, a handful of assists here and there, so um, we'll just go off that. And the only, well, the good thing about him that we can take into the new season is that he has nearly played 100 games over two seasons. And I believe last season he only missed out on one game. Um, so his, you know, his fitness levels are like through the roof. So um, hopefully that will, you know, um, come in handy to us. He could probably play in the uh, Czech Trade Cup, the, um, the Carabao Cup maybe, uh, and just... You know them sort of games along the way where we're not filled in um, our starting eleven, um, but yeah, he's I guess he's an exciting prospect. We'll see see what he can do for us because he is coming from non-league, so it, he is stepping up three leagues. So it's it's going to be hard. Obviously, he's going from part-time training to full-time as well. So we'll see how well he adapts to that. But. Um, yeah, that's about it on him. Uh, Darren Ferguson made a comment as well when we signed him back in May. Um, 
he said that he is a modern day fullback who likes to get forward, who likes to attack as well as defend, um, and also he likes to you know get a lot of assists with crosses and um, likes to help us a lot more of the attacking sense, which is um, which is good for us because last season we had Colin Daniel and uh, Tyler Denton at fullback, uh, left back, sorry, and. They didn't really go forward, same with Hughes, he didn't really attack at all. Um, so it, it'll be good to have like wingers bombing forward as well as defending. And person who I'll go uh, through in the, next, in the next couple of people uh, will definitely implement that. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that when we do. So yeah, that's, that's about it on uh, Blake Tracy. And hopefully he can um, take his chance as a proper professional footballer and um, shock us all. Right, so straight on to the next player, and this one we are going to be talking about Niall Mason, the 22-year-old right-back who we signed on a free after he was released by Doncaster, but a bit more about that later on. Um, so in his early life, he was born in Bromley. Um, at seven years old, his parents moved to Spain due to work reasons, and he was signed um, up to the Real Madrid Academy team, and he was there for a few years. Um, he spoke with David Beckham as they were the only two um, English speaking people in the club if that makes sense like when David Beckham was at the academy at that sort of point not obviously in the academy but like visiting and stuff and also he played in a team with um, Zinedine Zidane's son Luca and Enzo um, he played higher up um, he played higher up the pitch at this sort of stage but gradually fell back to the right back position um, during his career and then he moved to Qatar, or well, his family moved to Qatar, and he got signed by the Al Sad with two Ds um, Academy, and he played there for a couple of seasons. Then he moved back to England, or his family did, and he got signed for Blackburn Rovers in 2013. I believe he was 13 at this point. Something like that, yeah. And um, he played there for a couple of seasons, uh, just in the academy, and then he rejected a contract offer from them after a couple of years there, and he signed with Aston Villa, who offered him a contract, or Tim Sherwood did, and he joined them in Portugal in 2015 for their pre-season training. Um, didn't make too much of an impact at Aston Villa, actually. He got loaned out to Doncaster the following season. Um, and he was pretty much an ever-present in uh, both Grant McCann and Darren Ferguson's Doncaster side. So obviously both ex-posh managers, Grant McCann being an ex-player, um, so they both trusted him and played him um, pretty much until he was released. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, like I said, he, he played I think 98 times in three seasons for them. So um, I think that was just in the league too. So very decent return for him just for well two and a half seasons because he yeah um, he got released in January or got suspended in January. So um, yeah, he's he's done okay. I remember I've seen him a few times uh, like play against us for Doncaster. Obviously, I've been to the Keepmo Stadium quite a few times now, and um, he's a solid right back. He uh, you know, gets up and down the pitch. Um, his crossing could do a little bit of work, in my opinion, but um, I'm sure we can coach that into him because he's still only 22. Plenty of League One experience, nearly 100 games played at League One level, and obviously he's got that extra sort of international experience playing for playing in Qatar and playing um, for the Real Madrid Academy too. Um, so that that would have helped in no end. And I'm pretty excited by this. He will definitely push Jason Jason Naismith for a starting right back position. And um, yeah, it's always good to have competition for places. I'm sure either Naismith or Mason can fill in at left back too. I've seen that last season. And if we, you know, our centre backs get injured, Naismith could probably play centre back and Mason could play right back. There's a lot of different variations, and I'm quite excited to have some decent fullbacks, like I said before, in the um, in the squad. Um, but obviously there is a little bit of controversy to talk about with uh, Niall Mason. Um, he was convicted in 2019 after um, pleading guilty after advice from his lawyers um, about a charge of sexual assault. Um, what happened in a nightclub, I believe. I don't, don't really go into specific details because you know I'm not, yeah, I'm not really here to talk about that. So. Um, yeah, he got suspended in January, so didn't play the rest of the year, and he also um, got fired from Doncaster because, as a result of that, um, and then obviously Darren Ferguson, who 
played him so much a couple of seasons ago, um, signed him up on a free, uh, so it could be a good bit of business, but um, obviously it's not the best PR for us, but you know, everyone makes mistakes, I'm not saying that it's pretty inexcusable what he did, but um, hopefully you can just learn from it and um, and just just keep on with his professional career. That's what I'd like to see anyway, and um, hopefully you can flourish for us. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for, for Niall Mason, and um, I would probably rate this sign in, I'd say a seven out of 10, definitely. Um, Pim gets a six out of 10, and Blake Tracy gets a five out of 10 for me. So um, yeah, we'll get straight into the next player now. Right, so we have reached the halfway point, and the fourth player we're going to talk about is another defender, this time a left back, um, not Blake Tracy, it is Dan Butler. And I am very, very happy with this one, as you can tell, um, last season. We really, really struggled with left backs. Oh my god, it was painful having Colin Daniel. Oh. <laughs> god, I'm so glad we've got Butler in. I've I've seen him play. He is quality. Like his crossing is just perfect. <laughs> and yeah, I'm I'm really excited to have him because he's one of them players that can, unlike Denton and Colin Daniel, he bombs up and down the pitch and. He'll make a difference up top. He'll get a few assists, just to say the least. So, um, yeah, let's go over it now. So, like I said, he signed on a free transfer after I think we approached him uh, for pre-contract terms during the end of uh, the end towards the end of last season and managed to get him on a free because he's 24 years old or allowed to do that. Um, so, another free player and another very good signing. Uh, so, he signed a scholarship with Portsmouth uh, Portsmouth FC um, in 2010 after being with uh, with the club since 2004 going through the youth ranks that sort of thing and um, then in 2012 so two years later he signed his first professional football contract uh, it's a one year deal with Portsmouth and then a couple of months after he got loaned out to Haven and Waterlooville where he managed to win the player of the month for that particular team twice in a row um, and then uh, literally so he'd, he'd signed for there in November so he got the player of the month for November and December and then in January he was recalled uh, to Portsmouth um, because of a uh, a, um, a couple of injuries, uh, squad shortages in a left back. So he managed to get his debut in January of um, 20, 2013. 2013, that's right. And um, yeah, he went on to make, I think it was 74 appearances. I've got this right. There we go, 54. <laughs> That's why you should take notes. 54 appearances for Portsmouth during uh, 2012 until 2015. So yeah, you know, a decent amount of performances for League One and League Two level at least. Um, I'm glad he's got that league experience, but things didn't really work out for him at Portsmouth. So he went to um, Torquay in the conference, and um, from there he made pretty much. He, he appeared in all of the games that season. Um, he's he he made 45 appearances, scoring twice in the league and once in the cup. And then he signed for Newport in the 2016-17 season, where he managed to um, he managed to make 74 appearances, including the league and cup, and he scored three times in that time. And yeah, I've seen him play. Like uh, Newport in the cup, uh, historically, have done pretty well the past couple of seasons. So um, I managed to catch him on TV a few times, and he was very, very decent. So I'm really happy with this one. And um, he's got plenty and plenty of league experience. Not so much at League One level, but just having that league experience is a massive plus for me. Um, and only being 24 years old with league experience is, is very, very good. And considering we got him in, on a free, um, very, very pleased with that. So yeah, Dan Butler, he should be our starting left back 100% over Blake Tracy. I'd be very, very surprised if Blake Tracy got in there ahead of him, but um, we'll have to see when the first game of the season rolls around against Fleetwood. So um, yeah, that's about it on, um, on uh, Dan Butler. And I'm really excited for him to I'm really excited to see him tomorrow at Stamford to see what he's all about and see if that attacking intent, as our chairman has said, is actually there. Um, but yeah, hopefully he'll be able to add a couple of assists from the defence, from the wing backs, which we don't normally have. And yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens this season. So uh, I guess welcome to the club again. And um, we will see you uh, 
hopefully doing well tomorrow. So yeah, let's uh, get into the last defender of this one now. Right, let's get into the next signing, and I'm so, so excited for this one. Oh my god, we're actually going to have a proper leader at the back. We're going to have a proper captain, if he gets made captain. Mark Beavers, Jesus Christ. When this got announced, I was so happy. Finally, we've got a commanding, tall, someone that can win headers, someone that can score goals from corners, someone that can, you know usher the back line forward, someone that can take control when we're not doing too well. Um, yeah, everyone, you all know Mark Beavers, I'm not going to go through who he's played for, um, I'm not going to go through, you know, whatever. He He's made nearly 400 appearances in the Championship and in League One, most of them being in the Championship with Bolton and Millwall. We all know who he is, all posh fans know who he is, we've played against him many, many times and he has caused our strikers to have very hard days. Um, He's, he's strong, he's tall, he can he wins pretty much every header. Uh, and yeah, I'm just I'm just so excited to have him at the club because he will bring that stability and the and the level headedness that we just haven't had in our defenders for God knows how many years. Like whenever we're under the cosh we just seem to capitulate all the time and hopefully with him this won't happen. Um, I'm very excited. It's a bit like having um Steve, uh, Stephen Taylor, we had him a couple of seasons ago from the Premier League, obviously. Um, it's a bit like having him, but I'd argue that Mark Beavers is probably a little bit better because he's got more experience at this level. He's only 29 years old. Um, and yeah, he's, well, like I said, he's got experience at this level and even higher. So um, yeah, I'm very excited to have Beavers in. And yeah. Um, yeah, he he should he should really he should really be the captain of our team. Um, I think Ferguson is t sitting down with three or four potential um, captains uh, this week and deciding who will actually be wearing the armband on the first day of the season. So that will get uh, announced very soon. But I hope it's Beavers. Um, but we'll just have to wait to see. So yeah, we all know Mark Beavers. Not going to talk about him too much. But thank you. Thank you for signing him. Uh, shout out to Bolton though. Um, I know you're going through a really tough time at the moment and that's how we managed to get one of your better players in our club. Um, obviously you, none of the wages are being paid. Um, like this, even the staff, not just the footballers, like the staff that actually work at the ground and stuff aren't being paid by the owners. So um, yeah, shout out to them. Uh, hopefully the times will get better for you guys because um, you know, I remember back in the day, like Bolton being in the Premier League. Like I feel like that's where, that's where they belong almost. Um, so hopefully, the FA will sharpen up a bit to these dodgy ass owners and um, definitely, you know, clamp down there because it's ruining a lot of great clubs like Leighton Orient. Um, you know, Bolton. There's countless examples. Countless, countless examples. Uh, Blackpool. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm very happy we've got him. Uh, he got the. League One team of the season, not um, last season because they're in the championship obviously, but the season before alongside David Wheater, both of them getting in the team of the season. So yeah, he's definitely got League One on lockdown if he was um, if he was in that team of the season. So yeah, let's get right into the next player. Right, we are finally moving into the higher end of the pitch now and this is going to be Sir Hat Tazdemir from AFC Fylde. I believe we signed him for around about 500k. Uh, around about that mark from from filed as I say so quite a big fee coming up from the conference but um, <clears throat> he seems like a very decent player I've, I've, there's a, a video on the Peterbury United YouTube channel you guys should subscribe to that if you aren't already showing some my like, skills goals and assists that he's done looks very decent obviously on YouTube but we'll just we'll see how it goes in reality um, a very promising player only 20 years old as I've said um, and hopefully he'll be that sort of Erhanot's tumour that we've we've missed over the past few years um, obviously can just sort of create something out of nothing get the ball turn with it run uh, forward thinking you know that sort of stuff um, and yeah like I said hopefully he should be that that Ots tumour that we that we have been desperately lacking over the past couple of seasons because we have lacked that sort of agile centre attacking midfielder that can just turn 
anything into a situation where we can score. Um, so I'm very excited for this one actually, and hopefully you can do well. And like with Blake Tracy, um, I've looked on various different websites, I've done numerous searches, I couldn't find too many things. Um, but one thing I did find out is that he made 54 appearances for Fylde, I believe, with eight goals and four assists, that I'm certain of. So um, not the best, to be honest, you know, not great stats for non-league, but um, hopefully he's one of them that we can improve ourselves and just say, hey, look, this is why you should take a chance on non-league, because we've done it plenty of times before with uh, Gale, Tomlin, um, Boyd, McLean, Washington, um, so many others. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I, I am excited for this one. Um, hopefully he will be our next non-league gem. Because uh, that's what we're going back to now. We're going back to our roots. Fergie and McAnthony are very, very um, interested in the non-league gems. And um, so are we as fans because it's just this unknown player who can just turn into like one of our most important players. So it is, it's fun to watch. It's definitely fun to watch. And um, hopefully he should do decent tomorrow against Stamford because Stamford were a little bit, obviously, are below Fylde's level. So he should... In, in reality run that game from midfield but um we'll see from we'll see from tomorrow obviously i will be going and recording what i can um it's not going to be too interesting because it's a pre-season friendly but uh i'll show you around stamford stadium and that sort of stuff so um yeah that's about it i can say on uh, tazdemir like i said i searched so many places i just couldn't find hardly anything on him um, just go and watch that video that the Peterborough United YouTube channel posted and you'll be able to see some of his goals. And I believe if you just search his name in YouTube, there are quite a few different highlights and sort of, and uh, stuff like that on YouTube. So you'll be able to see from there. But just remember it is non-league, so he's not going to have as much time on the ball, etc, etc. Um, he's going to be up against better defenders and stuff. So... Yeah, hopefully he'll he'll bring a different dimension to the team and he'll be sort of a player that fans can get excited about. Like, he gets the ball and you just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, sort of like Madison, um, Cooper, them sorts of players. Dembele, especially, where we just... You get the ball and you're like, right, something's going to happen. We just don't know what. It could be either really good or crap. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Serhat Tazdemir, 20 years old. Signed him for quite a bit of money. So, um yeah, very excited for that one. Right, so dropping back down to defence again, we've got another centre-back in the name of Frankie Kent. Um, we signed him from Colchester for an undisclosed fee, and he was their player of the season last year, so a very standout performance from him. He's another natural captain. Um, I believe he was the captain for the under-18s team, and then progressed through the ranks, captain in each side from there. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy with him as well. That's two natural-born leaders at the back if um, they play together, so that would be very good for us you know shoddy defense i'm gonna say um for the last couple of seasons hopefully they should really shore things up along with dan butler on the left and naismith or uh, mason on the right so it should be really good for us um not too much to say about kent he's made about 140 appearances in, in league one and league two so a decent amount of league experience which i'm happy about i always prefer to sign players that actually have the league experience and then maybe a couple of you know, non-leaguers here and there, um, but for the majority, I like players who have that experience already, know what it's like to train full-time, know what it's like to be playing in important games, cup games, uh, playoffs, you know, that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Ken, and hopefully he should impose himself and get himself pretty much straight into the first team alongside Beavers, I'd I'd guess. Um, so yeah, well, I guess them two would have to fight for captaincy. Um, but at least we've got a good three or four players that can play as a captain. Um, I'm thinking likes of obviously Beavers, um, and then you've got obviously Ken um, Naismith can play as a captain, and so can uh, Woodyard. So we've got you know a good core of players that can fill in if one's you know injured or ill or whatever resting you know that sort of stuff so um yeah I'm, I'm very happy with that and we'll just see how he gets on in a posh uh, hopefully he can kick on and um and make his way through the ranks hopefully with us because from what i've heard he's a very promising young player so i'm glad we've gone out and spent mon uh, proper money on an actual defender 
Right, so here we have it, our last signing and the one I am probably the most buzzing about uh, is Mo Issa from Bristol City. We signed him for over a million, it was about 1,300,000 k I I believe, so about 1.3, 1.4 million I guess with add-ons and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're finally going to have pace up front, finally. Like, it's been so long since we've had like an Asamba longer. A Gale, um, you know, like them sort of players, Mikhail Smith, who can just turn on the afterburners and just go for it. Like, he has got uh, like bags and bags and bags of pace. And our chairman, uh, Darren McCamphy, has, has said uh, for seasons that he's wanted pace. Obviously, we've had Gordon, who did decent, Tony, they, they both did decent last season, but haven't really got a lot of pace on them. But Isa's going to be able to stretch the defence, he's going to be able to put us on the front foot he's going to be able to get us them goals where you know it's a foot race between him and a defender he's going to be able to do that for us and I'm so 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 excited that we have him in our team obviously he had a good season a couple of seasons back with Cheltenham um, and then he went to Bristol and kind of flopped but um, maybe because we were in talks with him last season to bring him um, like the start of last season to bring him into us instead of going straight to the championship but his agent decided to obviously get the payday and go straight to the championship as you would I guess um, and it didn't work out and him I guess being humble he's took a 40% pay cut to come to us so that's you know props to him that's really good he, it shows that he want he's here for the right reasons and he's here to play football and prove himself so hopefully he can fire us into the championship you know i'm being a bit optimistic here but um yeah i'm i'm very excited about the signings we've made this season um i'd probably say the best signing we've made is beavers but just because of the price we got him for free nothing you know player of the season god knows how many times probably um at his respective clubs you know team of the uh, team of the season a couple of seasons back in league one um and getting him for a free i know he's probably on a, a fat wage pack package but um you know you gotta pay big money for these sorts of players who will probably get you over the line in them tough games as i was saying earlier so for the free signings, 100% Beavers is my favourite, and then for the paid signings, it's got to be Mo Issa for me. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited to have a striker with pace again. Like, my ideal front four would be Tony, Issa, um, Dembele, and Madison as a front four. Can you imagine that? Jesus Christ, there's so much talent in that attacking lineup. Like that could match up to absolutely anyone, a hundred percent in League One. That could match up to anyone. I don't care what anyone says. Any Sunderland fans or whoever, our front four could match up to anyone else's, a hundred percent now. Um, Dembele is looking good after his injury in training. Uh, Madison staying, um, and he's just quality every season. Everyone knows that he's going to get probably the uh, top assists, and you know pitch in with about 10 goals as well and then Tony scored I think about 15 or 16 last season and then Godden obviously scored quite a few last season then Isa as well coming into that rotating sort of three strikers that will be in and out of the starting lineup oh, it's just going to be perfect I honestly cannot wait for the season to start um, it's just been so boring without football I've got my season ticket um, and I just can't wait to start like going to posh games again it's it's going to be great but um, yeah that's a li little bit of info um, an in-depth well kind of in-depth look at all the signings we've made obviously I couldn't get a lot of information on some of the signings because you know like non-league signings and lower league signings barely any information about them on the internet i definitely didn't do my research did do my research though i have been working on this video for quite a quite a long time i'll tell you that um and yeah it's um it's going to be a really exciting season obviously we'll kind of start at stanford tomorrow with a uh, pre-season our first one back in england so yeah i guess um i'll get this uploaded tonight hopefully um and then uh, as you're watching this um, tomorrow or if you're watching this on the Wednesday um, tomorrow will be the game at, uh, at Stamford so I'll go and record some footage there and hopefully just throw that into like a vlog or something so um, so yeah 
I, I would rate our transfer window a solid 9 out of 10. We've done really well. We just need one more midfielder, I believe. Um, and we are chasing one. Um, I can't remember who it is, though. Uh, there isn't any confirmed reports, but I know that McAnthony and Ferguson one's getting one more good midfielder. So as soon as he's announced, I'll make a video about it. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Uh, comment down below with anything I missed, um, what you think of this sort of video. And um, yeah, if I got all the information correct, I hope I did because them sites better not have lied to me. Um, obviously, most importantly, make sure to hit the big red subscribe button and uh, subscribe to my channel. Turn on the bell next to that subscribe button to get notified whenever I upload so you can be you know, one of the first ones to watch the video and all that sort of good stuff. So um, yeah, that's, that's about it from me. Uh, hopefully, we can have a good season this season and um, I can bring you plenty and plenty of posh content. And as always, guys, you know this by now. Cheers.